Yeah, <laughs> it's so good listening to her sister there. Uh, well, that's just only the beginning, and she has age on her side, and uh, a lot to uh, look forward to. Well, all right, still, um, let, let's move on quickly uh, now. We're pressed for time. Uh, let's go about FIFA, uh, the, uh, the FIFA presidency, uh, the elections uh, next month. <laughs> a lot of things uh, come into play now, and um, the other time we were talking about Prince Ali Hussein from Jordan. Uh, coming uh, against Seth Blatter. But this will shock you. The power brokers in Asia, yeah. more or less like saying that Ali is on his own. Because this is what it looks like. It, the it, whole federation is, is giving his Seth support Blatter. to Seth Blatter. But, but the same thing you have to look at now, the, the Australian FA actually said that they've not really come out to say who they were going to support. And if you look at the fact that Just they said one since, out, two, one out of 50, since 2013, They've been, they had a meeting, they said they were going to back Blatter. 2014, they did that. So they cannot change their mind. And the Czech Prince Ali just announced that he will be competing just this week. So at the end of the day, he discovered that he's practically on his own, just like you said. Okay. But with him, with Blatter having the backings of Asia, which actually happens to be the biggest power in, 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 the, in the FIFA. And of course, you're having Africa also supporting him. I think it's just, maybe Ali will have to look at CONCACAF. And maybe, the, the, and of course, the European body who really doesn't want the blatter anymore. I think that's where the fight is going to come up. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with Cecilia. It, it's, it's a game of numbers. And um, I, I really feel sorry for, <laughs> uh, Prince. for Prince Ali uh, if, if your federation. It means that you have, I mean, no political weights at home. Well, let, let's listen to the guys from, from, from Asia. Uh, like Cecilia just told you, they said they've decided a long time ago that they were always going to support Seb Blatter, and that has not changed. So let's listen to the guys. We'll come back for more on Sports This Morning. I think yes. He, he, he should. And also in, in the AFC General Assembly, we, we had in Kuala Lumpur before in, in, in 2013, and last General Assembly was in Sao Paulo. Both of them, we decide in General Assembly to vote for Blatter. So I, I, I think now Prince Ali, he have to consider that and he have to think about uh, uh, this matter a lot. You know, I don't know, and I cannot speak only about what my opinion and where my vote will go. And I think I was very clear, Kuwait will vote for Black. We are committed, all the member associations are committed to that, and from what I heard from them today and the last few days, they will continue to commit to their promise and word. And this is where we stand. From what I hear, you know, I don't want to give false hopes to anybody. I'm telling you as it is from what I hear from the National Association and their commitment. And I have to be clear on that. All right. Uh, <laughs> the key people are telling us they're behind Blatter. And I must tell you that Blatter has won five elections. Uh, in most cases, it was, was always a landslide. At some point, somebody, uh, somebody, uh, somebody had to step down. A lot of things. I, I'm still hoping that nothing happens to Prince Ali. I'm hoping some, some scandals don't, don't come his way. All right, let's go to England, uh, English Premier League. Let's take a look at the fixtures, matches to be played this weekend. Let me run through this for you. Sutherland takes on Liverpool. Burnley takes on Queen's Park Rangers. Chelsea take on uh, New Newcastle, um, Everton take on Manchester City, uh, Leicester take on uh, Leicester City that is take on Aston Villa, Swansea take on West Ham. Uh, these are some of the fixtures. West Brom take on Hull City, Crystal Palace uh, take on Tottenham uh, Hotspurs, Arsenal um, take on Stoke City, and Manchester uh, United take on Southampton. Cecilia, if you were to pick one. <laughs> I think I'll pick Southampton, Man United, Man United, Southampton, because that's the game you really need to look forward to. I wouldn't look at Everton and Man Manchester City because Everton right now on the downward slide, so that's not focus. But Man Manchester United and Southampton. Remember what Southampton did to Arsenal? Yeah. You know when they went to uh, at St Mary's. Now looking at, at Southampton, travelled away from home to Old Trafford, and Man City, the, uh, Manchester United, the yeah. record this season has been perfect at home. But I'm looking at Manchester United just winning this one because away from home is really not so good. But playing mm -hmm. at Old Trafford. That actually give them that the advantage guys have heard, to always want yeah, to win. The guys have heard the respect of almost everybody with the way they play this season. All right, yeah. uh, let, let's uh, move on. Let's take a look at the transfer center quickly. Victor Valdez uh, uh, to Manchester United. Jadon Shakiri 
to Inter. Inter a lot, I, a, a lot I will happen. to go to Liverpool. I thought I, mean, so I was shocked when Inter made the bid, and of course he went to Inter Milan. I think he wants a regular football, and he feels Inter Milan can give him that. Yes. Fine, but the thing is, you're leaving champions, a club that is playing the Champions League, and you're going to a club that might not even make the Champions Europa Sport. Talking about Champions League, I think, I think that's really something. Time. Yeah, it's, maybe it's, that's what he wants. But I think Liverpool would have been better for him. All right, all right, okay. Um, let's move on quickly now. And uh, well, Nations Cup, a uh, few weeks time. And I'm going to ask you a lot of players will leave uh, for the Nations Cup. With a Brody has left, a lot of other players, club versus country row, currently going on um, in some leagues uh, right now. The English Premier League will be uh, denied of the quality of yeah. uh, this guy. It's also on the verge yeah, of signing for Manchester City. But, but which league do you think will be affected most it's definitely by uh, the African Cup of Nations? I think it's the French League because you have all most of the African players playing in the French League. Yeah. A little bit in the English Premier League, but definitely French League more. But some players, definitely, some clubs will miss their key players. Yeah, Arturo will not be for Man City. We saw what he has done with them. Oh, of course, if you is... just talk, talked about, he scored 20 uh, league goals for Swansea last season. He will definitely not be there for them. I think some clubs will miss in the English okay. Premier League. But overall, I think this French League, because most of the players are really playing there. All right. Okay. So um, let, let's move on. As Cecilia just told you, she thinks that the French League will suffer more uh, from uh, the African Cup of Nations. Well, let's do two things uh, quickly. 2024 Olympics. Uh, we've been told by the United States Olympic Committee that they've chosen the city of Boston over San Francisco. Los uh, Angeles, Washington, D.C. and all that. A uh, state that has not hosted <laughs> the Olympics before, before and they are given the city its full backing. Maybe because of the marathon, usually they host the Boston Marathon that they host every year and it gets to have... They seem to have to the capacity to, 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 do. to do that. I think that's what they're looking at. And also the fact that the last time... They the have US some sports teams in Boston already too. They, that they can so actually, they are used to sporting events. Maybe that's the reason they actually picked maybe that. Maybe not as big as the Olympics. LA and of course Washington DC to be one of those cities that they could have picked. But picking Boston... 2024. Well, I think, well, the city is big enough, and of course, they have everything. two, two, three years to prefer to before the whoever wins the bid um, it is announced. We, we, we wish them all the best. Uh, we are hoping to get to a time that a Nigerian city will put in a good bid. I don't like, you, you don't want to see Cecilia's face when I talk about the Nigerian city, but we'll get there. It, it, it's Sunday. possible because we checked the last time IOC said in Vision 2020 that we are trying to do a situation whereby two or more cities can come up from a particular country yeah. to host it. So when that happens, I think Nigeria Lagos can Lagos and Abuja, Lagos and Abuja like precisely, that. or Lagos and well, what's that called? Lagos and okay. Calabar. Uh, our final time. take, Novak Djokovic, is it sign of things to come in Doha, Qatar? Uh, Rafael Nadal fell by the wayside, is now uh, one number one, Novak Djokovic. And if you're going to lose, lose to your peers. 35 year old Karlovic. Eva Karlovic. And I can't remember the last time I heard about uh, Eva Karlovic. And he lost the way he lost. He won the first set, lost, lost the two. A lot of people have said he's the heat. But the other guy was playing in the heat as well, mm -hmm. so I don't understand. Yeah, you know, I think you know, Novak Djokovic is a father right now. So, I mean, he's having two responsibilities and other distractions. And I think the heat also plays a major factor. But you have to play in Australian Open. And if you can win or get to the finals, then you have to play in the heat. This is just one of the warm-up games. Was, um, but I'm looking at it, it was quite close. Because Ivan Karlovic has actually declared him before in Madrid Masters. Yeah. And that was in 2008. But well, it's been a long time. But defeating him now, and for the fact that, I mean, he's 35. Well, I don't know what's going to happen to Novak Djokovic. <laughs> in the Australian Open. I think this is definitely be a step for him to really want to prepare more. Okay. That look, he's not there yet, so we really need to go and prepare more for the All Australian right. Open. Now that we have to wrap things up on the show, we hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to do. You can join us later tonight when we have more time on our hands for Sports Tonight. So that's how we leave it. Sports This Morning comes your way again um, next week. Till then, bye bye.